Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today I come to you with some pretty awesome and massive new details regarding the upcoming film, One Piece Stampede. And quite specifically in relation to its mysterious antagonist, Douglas Bullet. But before we get into that though, I'd like to say that this information comes to us courtesy of Weekly Shonen Jump, and it was translated by the Library of O'Hara, a link to which will be in the description below. But let's get into it because this film is just sounding crazier and crazier. So what we have are three general blurbs of information regarding Mr. Bullet in the areas of power, past, and abilities. And starting with power, we have the following. Many renowned fighters all fighting against one man at the same time. This man's name is Douglas Bullet, an escapee from Impel Downs Level 6, and quite possibly the most dangerous criminal to have ever escaped from there. A former crew member of the Roger Pirates, an outstanding man known as the Demon Heir. Even his aforementioned crew members would struggle to defeat Bullet. That's how strong he is. And then there's a little thing on the right hand side that says their goal is to join forces to take on the most dangerous escapee ever in all of Impel Down's history. So wow, that's a lot of things happening there. First and foremost, this now confirms that One Piece Stampede is going to be an Avengers film of sorts, with many characters coming together to fight for the common goal of taking down the One Piece equivalent of uh, Thanos, I guess. Which is interesting because I'd previously thought that this whole Pirate Expo thing might just become a massive free for all with chaos galore, but I do really like this idea as well. And it's because of the thought of seeing, you know, like a Luffy and Lucci team up, who I specifically mentioned because he's on the poster. That combination is one that I have never thought of and it's quite exciting, but it does not stop there because there are so many characters in this film that we really could end up with an end game style scenario. I should say at this point that the blurb is accompanied by the poster and it singles out every character on it. Those being Luffy, Lucci, Law, Smoker, Buggy, Sabo and Boa Hancock. So it's entirely possible that what we'll be looking at here is a situation in which these characters alone are forced into a group taking on Bullet. Like, yes, I know that the worst generation the rest of the Straw Hats and a buttload of Marines are said to appear as well, but they may be excluded from the direct conflict somehow, which would probably be for the best. Because I mean, looking at the cast of Stampede, it's just far, far too many characters to handle. And this core group here really do represent pretty much the entire breadth of One Piece between them. So I'd be thrilled if they were the main protagonistic focus of the film. But getting into Bullet, I was quite surprised to find out that he's a level six escapee. I guess primarily because it's a feature that has been exploited to hell and other non-canon kind of material. Like after that event happened in the manga, it was just so easy to make main villains for games or TV specials and have them be level six escapees because you didn't have to come up with a convenient excuse as to why they haven't been too active in the world prior to encountering the Straw Hats. Here we go again and I don't mind it. I just wish that we hadn't explored that idea so much already in other One Piece media, which is, you know, my fault for consuming far too much of it, I guess. <laughs> so for Bullet to have escaped Impel Down, we know that he must have taken up the Blackbeard challenge, which meant that he would have needed to kill everyone else in his cell in order to win his freedom. And with that in mind, we can actually get a glimpse into his personality as he seems more than willing to engage in extraordinary brutality, which makes the whole being a Roger pirate very intriguing because he'd be the first proper loose cannon they had on the crew, I guess. And speaking of, in terms of power, this article makes an incredibly grand statement in that even Bullet's former comrades would have had trouble defeating him. Now let's think about that for a second. How deep does that go? Are we talking people who sailed with the Roger Pirates like Neko Momushi and Inuarashi? If so, that's pretty damn strong. But the article would seem to imply that we're going much further than that, possibly as far as members such as living legends like Shanks or Silver's Ray Lee, and maybe, even Roger himself. I suppose what isn't clear is if they struggled to defeat him when they were sailing together or whether they would struggle to defeat him in the modern day. Although either way is pretty insane actually, because in the past you'd be dealing someone with like a prime Silver's Rayleigh and in the modern day, a Yonko redhead Shanks. And I don't wanna go crazy with saying crap like Om Douglas Bullet is Yonko level confirmed because one, levels are bullshit and two, because Stampede isn't canon, it's not really worth getting into. But for the purpose of this isolated film, he looks to be by far the most powerful antagonist we've encountered in the movie series. And unlike elderly figures such as Shiki or Zephyr, Douglas Bullet still seems very much in prime physical condition. But we also have another blurb directly concerning Bullet's past, which I will read to you now. In the past, Bullet used to be a soldier that rushed into the battlefield, being considered a talented man praised as a hero. However, after a certain incident, he resigned from the military. Sometime later, after meeting Roger during a certain occasion, he joined his crew and played an active part as a valuable asset of the crew. However, after Roger's death, he kept going down a corrupted path of life. So more intriguing stuff there. Implying the bullet would have been part of the military of a particular nation, I guess. Although there's a lot of vagities here, which I suppose is for the good of the film. What I find most interesting is that he started out his career on the path of a hero, which to be honest is giving me some film Z vibes. As much as bullet has been very much painted as this brutal powerhouse, this little tidbit makes me think that he's not ultimately going to be such a bad guy. By which I mean, he isn't going to be a Dolph Domingo level 
level of dick, but more a misguided decision maker level of dick, as we saw with Zephyr. And then there's also this very strong connection with Roger at play here, as if Roger was the man who may have set Bullet on the straight and narrow, but after his death, Bullet fell back onto a darker road. So there's some potential for motivation here, in regards to Bullet showing up to the Pirate Expo, you know, as if he feels that he needs to protect something in regards to Roger, or that he needs to stand as a test for anybody wishing to find Roger's treasure. I don't know, something along those lines. But I feel like something to do with Roger is most certainly the reason why Bullet will be here. And the third and final section we have a bit on are his abilities, which reads as follows. Douglas Bullet is shown to have the ability to combine all sorts of things such as iron and weapons. In addition, he also possesses Conqueror's Haki, an ability impressive enough to make someone a potential candidate for Pirate King. How will Luffy and the others stand up to one of the most powerful enemies they've faced so far? Everything will be resolved this summer on the big screen. So that's pretty cool. As we initially thought from looking at one of the teaser trailers, Bullet is a user of Conqueror's Haki. Not that it should really come as a surprise to anyone anyone who didn't pick up on it in the trailer, because this ability is more or less a prerequisite to fight at the very top levels these days, and I can't see any opponent of Luffy from here on out not having it. Now in regards to his other powers, the name of his devil fruit is also revealed, which is the Gasha Gasha no Mi, or the Clank Clank fruit, which makes him an assimilation human. Super cool fruit idea, but I still think it's a weird matchup for this particular character though. Like, yeah, I guess we don't really know much about him yet, but he gives off a serious fist fighter vibe, which goes completely against the nature of this fruit, which would create giant constructs for him to pilot, I guess. I mean, it is a very interesting combination though, because I don't think we've ever seen a truly powerful individual invoke the giant robot approach to life. You know, when you think back on figures that have done similar things, they've always been kind of weak at heart, resorting to these giant roboty things as a quick fix for their lack of physical ability. Like for example, to Zoro in film Gold, he went full robot to combat Luffy by the end of it. But even in the series canon, we have an example in Gecko Moria who lost the will to physically engage in combat and so found a giant zombie to pilot. So on the one hand, it's pretty exciting to think about what a true powerhouse could do with this sort of ability, but on the other, I still have a bit of trouble picturing it. Although intriguingly, there's actually a little submarine shown in the article, which would mean the bullet's creations are unaffected by being submerged in water, and also something I'm sure will become much more apparent in the film, but the creations seem to be branded with the number nine. How very mysterious. But that pretty much does it for this new info on One Piece Stampede, which is set to release in cinemas in Japan on August 9th and the rest of the world sometime much later, I hope. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on this new information. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.